Hello and welcome to Blokona Range. Uh, the ranges are just opening up here in Switzerland after the winter break and uh, we thought we'd kick things off by taking part in the Cabin Fever Challenge. Now for those of you who don't know what that is, it is an uh, international postal competition run by uh, riflechair.com and um, it encourages people to get out in winter when perhaps they do have a bit of cabin fever and uh, dust off their rifles and take part in a friendly international competition. Um, all the rules you can find on uh, riflechair.com or on Facebook. They have a nice handy document which uh, divides, defines all the categories and how to uh, do the competition and how to get the results to Rifle Chair. Um, but I'll give you a quick run through of uh, all the divisions. So Division 1 is what they call Vintage or Original, so let's say uh, first generation semi-auto battle rifles up to just before the AR-15, so they've got a couple of examples here, VZ-58, um, AG-42, M1 Carbine, M1 Garand, uh, Stock AK-47, uh, Mass-44, Mass-4956 and so on. Uh, of course, they don't have to be military rifles, but typically they are. Then we have Division 2, which is modern stroke uh, tricked out, unlimited. So that's self explanatory. So anything in Division 1 with fancy stuff, scopes, etc., um, and then anything modern with um, anything you want mounted on them, basically, uh, you are not allowed to use a bipod. Slings, fine, but no bipod or any other type of rest. You can use a sling though. Um, so, for example, I asked whether the Mass 4956 with the APX scope would count as Division 1, because it was also issued stock with it, but I said no. They prefer to put the things with optics in the tricked out division, which is understandable. Uh, then Division 3, um, manual repeating rifles, whatever that is, bolt, lever, pump, then we have uh, Division 4, which is single shots, self-explanatory, anything that uh, needs a round loaded one by one. That also includes uh, repeaters that can be switched to single shot as well. If you have a mag cutoff that causes you to feed one by one, you can use that in the single shot division. Then, <coughs> excuse me, we have Division 5 muzzle loaders. Now that applies to everything, uh, flintlocks, percussion, inline, um, Anything goes, uh, also what's fitted to it is not limited in any way, up to you, and how you load it, again, is up to you. And the sixth division is 2-2 rifle. Uh, this is also completely open. It can be bolt actions, uh, semi-autos, you can have scopes, silencers, whatever. Uh, so divisions one to four, are typically everything that is uh, full bore, as uh, we say in the UK, is uh, shot at 100 meters and the uh, muzzle loaders and 2-2 are shot at 50 meters. So the targets, which are also available to print out on the website, for uh, the uh, 100 meter it is this 8 inch bull, uh, also for the muzzle loaders at 50 meters and for the 2-2 division it is a 4 inch bull. So the way you shoot, I'll go through the muzzle loaders separately because all the others are the same. So you have 20 rounds and you have to have a change of position every five rounds in a particular order. So you start off standing, then you switch to kneeling, then you go down to prone, and then you go to sitting. Now you must have a reload between in the changes of position, also obviously with repeaters you do anyway in um, single shots as well. Uh, but yes, so basically you will be transitioning position with an unloaded gun or with a magazine out if you have um, semi-autos. Um, for the muzzle loaders, it is simply one shot per position because you're going to be reloading uh, whatever rifle you have, probably standing up, uh, so that's, uh, that's going to eat up a lot of time. And the scoring is uh, very easy. You will want to time yourself from the first shot to the last shot. And you will want to see how many holes you have in the black zone. 
So anything outside doesn't count as a hit. And um, it is the hits on target multiplied by five, divided by the time from first shot to last shot in seconds, multiplied by 100. And that will get a score. And that all the scores will be uh, collected together. And at the end, they do some kind of little award ceremony, virtual, I, I guess, um, for the winners of each category. Now, what they uh, would like to see from us, or you, is uh, a video of you going through the whole process so they can check the time um, and they can check that you're doing the transitions in the right order and safely. Uh, if you can, uh, you can uh, film the target so then you can have a little talk through about uh, how it went. Uh, that's not always possible, um, but they at least want to see a nice clear shot of the target at the end so they can verify your score. So this is an honesty based system so uh, trust that we're all not poking holes with our pencils. Now the idea here at Bloken Range was to do this at 300 meters, a sort of hardcore edition. Um, Rifle Chair very kindly gave us permission to do that because it just so happens that uh, if you scale up this 100 meter target at, uh, for 300, it's pretty much the same size as the black on the standard Swiss A10 300 meter target. Uh, unfortunately, at the last minute, the logistics didn't work out. Um, so you're just going to have me uh, doing division four, uh, five, and six. So the muzzle loaders and the two, two. So let's see how I get on. Ja. Ich habe mich nicht mehr so gut gefunden. Ich habe mich nicht mehr so gut gefunden. 
Lovely. So there we go. We show you the good, the bad, and the frankly embarrassing. So um, with the muzzle loader, I was extremely happy with the result. It was very comfortable to shoot in all positions. Um, the lock worked perfectly for once and reloading was also great. I just had one little bit where I, for some reason, couldn't find the touch hole. Happens to all of us. Um, but yeah, you really know you're a, a muzzle loader when you can hit at speed all the shots, uh, yet with a nicely, finely tuned, well-balanced uh, 2 2 rifle, uh, you get this. Uh, I can't really explain it. Um, I'm guessing it's mostly down to speed, especially with a little diopter sight, um, or aperture sight, I should say. It's very easy to, slight, to put the front sight slightly too high, um, and I'm guessing that was the, this explains this. Um, I'm guessing this was probably prone. Of course, I, since I don't have a scope, I can't see or correct where I'm going. So once I start going wrong, um, it's too late. I won't see it until it's all over. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the competition. I certainly enjoyed it. Um, it was interesting to do this transition, um, to get in this flow of one to the other. Uh, sitting was perhaps the most unusual. Um, it worked okay to doing one shot with the flintlock, uh, but doing the series with the uh, Mass 45, you can tell in the vid that I'm, I'm not really sure how to sit and where to place my body parts. So uh, that needs some more practice. But I uh, really hope that next year, either we sort out the logistics for the 300 meter hardcore version, or we finally get access to a 100 meter range, and then we can do the whole series. So, thank you for watching. Hope you liked this little clip of the competition. And uh, thank you for all your support on whatever platform you wish to follow us on. And uh, see you next time.